Well, good day and uh, welcome back to Mission Control. Uh, joining us today is uh, Bill Lane. He is the uh, Commercial Crew Pro Program uh, Partner Manager for uh, uh, Blue Origin. And uh, Bill took the time to come by and talk to us about uh, what's going on with uh, uh, specifically Blue Origin, one of the uh, partners in the commercial crew program, and uh, and uh, kind of update us on uh, what's going on there. And Bill, appreciate you joining us here at the uh, Public Affairs Console in the Station Flight Control Room. Thank you, Kyle. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I usually, before I get into exactly what all you're doing there with uh, working directly with Blue Origin, but uh, I like to start out with a little biographical stuff so everybody uh, knows who you are. Uh, tell a little bit about yourself, like how you got into NASA in the first place, wh you know, how you came up, where you went to school, those types of things. Okay, well, let's see, Kyle. I was uh, born and raised in the Pittsburgh area, um, hail from a small town of Cannonsburg. And uh, as a kid growing up in the 70s, I was inspired by the Apollo program. Um, Everything was about Saturn V's for me, so uh, going into aerospace engineering, uh, that's what I studied at Penn State. Uh, it was a natural fit for me to come uh, to NASA. That's pretty much what I've always wanted to do, and uh, that was my dream. So uh, here I am at, uh, at JSC. Um, once I graduated from Penn State, came here uh, working in mission operations. Uh, eventually uh, got through uh, control propulsion instructor training and eventually became a uh, flight controller in the booster world so so, so you you actually you trained crews first and then and then you actually moved over to the flight control side right. of the house that's now. right so uh, mission operations was a great great background great uh, proving ground to uh, really understand shuttle systems and uh, uh, after the Columbia accident I went over to uh, the program office I worked orbiter project office as a uh, mission evaluation room manager so I started working on the engineering side and uh, eventually became a vehicle manager, and here I am today in the uh, commercial crew program office. So when when you transitioned out of shuttle after the flights, or did you transition before the end of the program? How did how did you transition over? I uh, transitioned from the shuttle world to the commercial crew program office um, just after the STS-132 mission. So um, it was uh, the official last flight of Atlantis. Um, which was uh, a great experience working with the Atlantis team, uh, the, the greatest greatest team out there. So it was a pleasure to do that. After SGS-132, um, I went to uh, help the commercial crew program office working with the uh, FAA folks in uh, Washington. And uh, then I had the opportunity to work with uh, Blue Origin folks. So um, it was uh, just towards the end of the program when I transitioned to the commercial crew program office. So the... Uh first last flight of uh, Ad That's right. Atlantis it was the, before. It, as Ken Ham would put it, the first last flight. Of, right, right. Of, uh, Ken Ham, the uh, commander of STS-132. That's great. Um, well, now we, you know, you transition over to you know, kind of a new program where we, we've spent the, the whole week, uh, and we will spend the whole week talking about the commercial pr crew program. And of course, this is a great setting because we're in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, and and uh, of course, that's what uh, the commercial crew program is all about right now is uh, you know, developing vehicles that you know, could deliver crews to and from the International Space Station. So um, tell us what a partner manager, uh, you know, that role is for you as, as one of the, I guess, seven partner managers that are in the um, Space Act Agreement part of the program right now. Okay. Um, so that's a that's a great lead-in with uh, the work we have to do to establish uh, a U.S.-based um, uh, human spaceflight access to to our international space station. Um, uh, as a partner manager, um, uh, I lead a small team. It's called an insight team. Uh, Misty Snupkowski is my deputy manager. She hails from Kennedy Space Center, and my technical integration lead is Bill Hill Jr., who's also from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, so the three of us uh, lead uh, the insight team that um, essentially works with each commercial partner. In this case, we work with Blue Origin, and uh, we um, work with them on a on a daily and weekly basis to um, uh, help them get through some of the technical requirements that that we have for our human spaceflight capability. We monitor uh, their progress towards milestones, and we. Um, 
uh, make recommendations to the program on their on their milestone performance, as well as participate in monthly reviews with them and quarterly reviews with the program. So yeah, that's what I was kind of the ask front it. face of the of, of NASA. We we are the front line, um, and we're involved with with the commercial partners. In this case, with Blue Origin, we um, off, as often as we can get to the Seattle area to. Um, to uh, participate in activities at the plant location with the Blue Origin personnel. And um, one of the biggest things that we do is provide some of the NASA expertise in lessons learned. Um, flying this shuttle for over 30 years, we have a lot of experience with a lot of the systems right. that the commercial partners are, are, are um, maybe a little bit newer uh, in working with some of these human rated systems. So we, we provide a lot of lessons learned with through technical interchanges with these companies so that they can have some quality time with with our experts that have been doing this. Some uh, oftentimes some of the original designers. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about the you know how you you know these companies are some of them new and uh, obviously a the a different world than the government side. So how do you how do you integrate yourself with with these companies and 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 how do they receive that? Uh, that's a great question. That's where some of the softer skills come in. Um, as Covey would say, to be understood, one must first understand. So that's kind of, um, you have <laughs> to understand where the companies are coming from and you try to echo where the government's coming from. Um, for example, uh, a private company can s oftentimes move a lot faster than the government when it comes time to making uh, risk trades, making technical decisions, making design decisions. Um, and when it comes time to, let's say, sharing data, it will often take time for the government to follow the proper processes to release data to some of these companies. So uh, it's it's um, putting yourself in their shoes and, and trying to help them understand where we're coming from, so. All right, well, uh, now you're working specifically with uh, Blue Origin and, and you said they're up in the Seattle um, area. And you also mentioned, you know, what People may not understand uh, what milestones are. We know milestones are, but how do, how does that all work in terms of their Space Act agreement with NASA? Because Space Act agreements, we we work with those a lot, but uh, we're kind of doing it's a new way of doing business with the commercial crew program, and of course you're you're focused specifically with that company, right? Right. So in in the world of Space Act agreements, uh, as you know, we do not levy requirements. Um, to their technical designs. What we do is we partner uh, the entrance and exit criteria or, or uh, the success criteria, as well as uh, the milestone dates and, and the payment amounts. So as, a, as the Insight team, we will uh, work with the partners to, to ensure that they're on track to make some of these milestones. Uh, for example, uh, in the space vehicle, which we have a picture of here uh, we can see in a little while. Um, yeah, they've got it up for you. The, there. Uh, the space vehicle, uh, the first milestone we had was the mission concept review. So we sat down and l reviewed the entrance criteria, which was uh, Blue Origin providing us with several documents uh, to review like the uh, draft copy of the mission concept or, or the mission operations, um, con ops, and, uh, and in draft interface uh, documentation. We would review those, um, sit down as a, as a joint NASA and Blue Origin team to review um, the success criteria to ensure that, for example, one of the criteria is that the uh, mission was feasible. So we sat down and said, based on your current designs, where you're at in this design cycle at the mission concept review, is it feasible? So we worked through that and we eventually got to a point where we said, everyone's in agreement, it's it's a feasible mission, and, and we moved on and accepted the, the milestone. Uh, a little bit later, uh, it, towards the end of CCDev2, we will have the space vehicle um, system requirements review. So it will be a very similar, or what we call the SRR. It will be a very similar review where um, uh, Blue Origin provides us with the, uh, the the necessary documentation. We review it and, and, uh, and sit down as a team and, and review the success criteria to make sure that we agree that the milestone has been met. Can you talk about some of the specific milestones uh, that, that have been met and kind of what's ahead for Blue Origin as we move forward? So there are three uh, efforts for Blue Origin. The first is space vehicle that, that we mentioned. Um, the second is um, what's called their engine uh, TCA. TCA is thrust chamber assembly. Um, Blue Origin is developing their own uh, first stage engine. 
and uh, this uh, thrust chamber assembly goes a long way in their development. So um, we are funding milestones to um, uh, provide testing of, of that engine of that thrust chamber assembly. Mm -hmm. The first milestone that we completed was the test plan review, and that was uh, com uh, that's already behind us. Um, we agreed uh, on that su success criteria, so uh, that one went well. The next one is uh, uh, the testing of that of that uh, thrust chamber assembly. That will be done at the Stennis Space Center, um, and uniquely qualified to do that type Uniquely of testing. Uniquely qualified to do that type of testing. Yes, right. they have much larger stands that can accommodate some of these uh, some of these larger engines. And uh, once we start testing, then their final deliverable will be the uh, a quick look test report to NASA. So um, that'll be the thrust chamber assembly uh, work that we have to do. And the third effort is on what's called a pusher escape motor. Um, this is a solid rocket motor that is uh, intended to mount underneath the, the uh, 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 a vehicle to uh, it, to use as a, an escape motor, and uh, we will go through uh, several rounds of, of testing. Uh, first, we have to uh, deliver the test vehicle, and that is uh, one of the milestones, one of the paid milestones. Then we will conduct a ground test of of the uh, solid rocket motor, and then we will uh, perform a pad escape test where the motor is actually mounted to the pad escape test vehicle and uh, launched. Uh, so that's those are some very exciting uh, pusher pusher escape milestones ahead of us. We're uh, we're visiting with Bill Lane. He's the uh, partner manager for Blue Origin uh, as uh, the NASA uh, liaison to that uh, uh, company through the Commercial Crew Program Office. Y you mentioned excitement. Uh, that was one of the questions that I had for you. There there seems to be a lot of excitement. Um, you know, if you're internal and, and maybe even external, but uh, w I see this, you know, going into meetings and stuff. Uh, um, do you see that with all the companies? Do you see that on both sides of the fence, um, you know, that you're integrated with this particular company? Um, I do see it on both sides of the fence. Um, now that we're getting closer to some milestones where you're actually seeing hardware uh, perform, a lot of folks are quite excited uh, on both sides. So um, I, w we can't wait. Um, you know, uh, April and May are going to be very busy for us, so uh, we're looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I guess using the word fence may not be the right thing anymore because when you use the word integration, there really is no fence any longer because you actually are working so fence, closely together, right? Right, just different badges. You know, the last thing that I was going to ask you is, and, you know, I, w everybody gets this a lot, but, uh, you know, how do you describe what you do to people outside like your family and friends? I would describe my job to family and friends. Um, I call it uh, a technical integration role, where um, uh, my job is to seamlessly and effortlessly um, make sure that the uh, companies are um, successful with what we're with what we've uh, asked them to do these space act agreements. Um, and it's also a liaison role, a liaison role with um, working on the people skills part of it to uh, fully integrate teams so that we we function as one team. Well, that's great. Uh, I really appreciate you stopping by. This is a perfect setting to kind of tie the commercial pr crew program uh, with what's going on here in the station flight control room. Uh, Bill Lane, the partner manager for Blue Origin uh, within the commercial crew uh, program office. Bill, thanks again for stopping by. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it. Thank you.